solving quadratic equations. And today we're going to be working on completing the square. Now so far, we've learned how to factor. We also use the quadratic formula to solve for x. Now for today, we're going to be working on completing the square method. Now in the past, we've dealt with a lot of um, quadratic equation of different forms. We have a missing linear term or a missing constant on the first um, example. We have a missing linear term on this example. And in this particular quadratic equation, we have a complete set. So an example of a quadratic equation with a missing constant will be 2x squared plus x equals 0. And a quadratic equation with a missing linear, linear term will be 3x squared minus 9. And a quadratic equation with a complete set will be x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Now, there are two um, levels of factoring. One is easy and one is difficult. The easy way of factoring is when your leading coefficient or your quadratic term has a coefficient of 1. And the more difficult um, factoring method will be when your quadratic equation has a leading term of more than 1. So this box right here could be 2, 3, 4, 5. So this one is more difficult than the first one. And in the quadratic formula, for you to use the quadratic formula, you need to memorize the quadratic formula. So you need to uh, know the formula um, prior to uh, using the quadratic formula to solve for x in a quadratic equation. And it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So if I was able to memorize it, I'm sure you'll be able to memorize it too. And lastly is the completing the square method, which we're going to be working on today. So let's summarize the different sets of quadratic equation that we had in the past. So sometimes I always say that we use the zero product property in solving for x. Now the zero product property by definition is if a times b is equal to zero, then either a equals zero or b is equal to zero. And uh, we use it when we have factors of quadratic equation equal to zero and we're solving for x. Example number one, we have x times x plus 3 equal to 0, and by using the zero property, or zero product property, we can split these factors into two. The first factor is a monomial, which is x. The second factor is a binomial, which is x plus 3. So for a monomial, x is simply equal to 0. And for this binomial, we need to solve for x to be able to find the values of x. So we have x plus 3 is equal to 0. Get rid of 3 by subtracting 3 on both sides, so x is equal to 3. So the two values of x in this equation will be x equals 0 and x equals 3. Now sometimes, the zero product property is not used right away. An example of which is example number 2. We have x squared plus 2x equals 0. And this is an, is an example of a quadratic equation that has a missing constant. So to um, factor this out, we need the greatest common factor for x squared and 2x, and that is x. And by dividing x to x squared and 2x, we'll end up with x times x plus 2 equals 0. And this is, our, this is our new factors for this quadratic equation. Now, we can use the zero product property by splitting it into two. Our monomial is x equals 0, and our binomial is x plus 2 equals 0. Solving for x is x equals negative 2. So again, we have two values of x, 0 and negative 2. And the third example that uses a product, zero product property is two binomials. If you have two binomials, just split them into two right away and equate each binomial or each factor by zero to use the zero product property so we can solve for x. So for the first factor, x minus 5, equate it to zero, x is equal to 5. And for the second factor, 2x minus 1, equate it to zero, Subtract 1 on both sides, divide by 2, so that x is by itself. Now x is equals 1 half. So again, we have two values of our x's using the zero product property. And just like the first set, sometimes we don't use the zero product property right away. Given x squared minus x plus 12 equals 0, we need to perform the factoring method to solve for x. So that we'll be use, we'll we can use the zero product property. So in this case, we have x plus 3 times x minus 4 equal to 0. You split it into 2, and you have x plus 3 is equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to negative 3, and x is equal to 4.
And this is the zero product property, which we use in solving quadratic equation without um, the use of the quadratic formula or completing the square method. Now let's have one example of equation or quadratic equation that uses the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is intimidating because it's a huge formula and there's a lot of letters in the formula, there's a lot of signs, and a lot of students are creating or making a mess once they forgot the negatives, when are they going to subtract it, etc. So let's do it step by step because the key here is to um, show every step and to be accurate with our operations. So first, given 2x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0, you need to identify what is a, what is b, and what is c in your quadratic equation. And in this case, a is 2, b is negative 3, and c is negative 1. So the first step is to write the formula. So write the formula in your paper so that you will know which numbers to replace the letters with. So we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And replacing the letters with the corresponding numbers. Negative b plus or minus the square root of, of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now that you have set up your formula, you can s simplify your equation by, of course, first one. Two negatives becomes positive. That's why we have three. Negative three squared is negative three times negative three, which is nine. And four times two times negative one is negative eight. And negative eight, or negative and negative, we know is positive. So this will change into a positive. So I want you to watch out with this sign because a lot of errors in quadratic formula happens on this part of the formula. Remember, if you have two negatives inside the radical, you're most likely going to add up those two numbers. So that's how I think. When I see two negatives, I add the two numbers right away. So I hope you will do the same thing. So that's one technique that you could use. So you have 9 plus 8 all over 4. Now simplify your expression. So you have 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 because 9 plus 8 is 17 all over 4. Now in this stage, there's no way that we can simplify square root of 17 because the square root of 17 is not a perfect square. So to simplify square root of 17, you will use the calculator. So in this case, just split them into two, rewrite the entire problem. So you will see or visually see that there are two values of x's. The first one will be 3 plus square root of 17 over 4, and the other one will be 3 minus square root of 17 over 4 because we always end up with two values of x whenever we're working with a quadratic equation. So these are the two values of x's that we have using the quadratic formula. And now for our third method, which is completing the square method. Prior to uh, using that method, you need to know the special um, process that is involved in the completing the square method. And that is producing a perfect square trinomial. So how do you produce a perfect square trinomial? So first, you need to know what a perfect square trinomial is. So an example of perfect square trinomials will be x squared plus 6x plus 9, x squared minus 10x plus 25, and x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now the question is why are they called the perfect square trinomial? The reason why they're perfect square trinomials is because when you factor these three trinomials, or quadratic equation, like for number 1, we know that the factors of 9 that gives us 6 when we add them up together will be 3 and 3. And if we change it into factors of x squared plus 6x plus 9, we have x plus 3 and x plus 3. Now notice that the two factors that we have have the same number and same sign, x plus 3 and x plus 3. That's why they called a perfect square trinomial because the two factors of your quadratic equation are just the same, which we can further simplify as x plus 3 squared. So now you're seeing the square in the perfect square trinomial. So in this case, for number 2, we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. So by factoring, we know that it's x minus 5. 
and x minus 5. And if we simplify this, we'll have x minus 5 squared. So a perfect square trinomial, when you factor it out, will be x minus 5 and x minus 5. And when you simplify it, will be x minus 5 squared. And for our third example, the factors of 36 that will give us 12 when we add them up will be x plus 6 and x plus 6, which gives us x plus 6 squared. And that's how we know that they are a perfect square trinomial. Now, in completing the square, we need to know how to create a perfect square trinomial. So I'm giving you three quadratic equations with a missing constant term. So we're going to fill this out and find the constant term that will give us a perfect square trinomial when we factor them out. So the formula is pretty simple. You always look at the middle term because your constant term is dependent to your middle term to create a perfect square trinomial. And to do that, you just need to think of half. Half of the middle term, and then you square it. So we have half of the middle term, which is 20, and half of 20 is 10, and then you square it. And 10 squared is equal to 100, and 100 is the number that will give us a perfect square trinomial. And that's how we answer, or how we create a perfect square trinomial. So let's try it with the second example. We have x squared minus 12x plus a number. So the number that we're looking for is dependent on the middle term, which is 12. Half of 12 is 6, and you take the square of 6 is equal to 36. So you have 6 squared is equal to 36. So therefore, our perfect square trinomial for the constant is 36. Now for number 3, this example is a bit different from 1 and 2. Why? Because if you think of half of 5, you'll end up thinking a fraction or a decimal. So half of 5 we know is 2.5, but in fraction, fo fraction form, half of 5 is simply 5 over 2. And 5 over 2, or I'm sorry, so half of 5 is equal to 5 over 2. And then you take the square of half of 5, which is 5 over 2, to create your constant term for your perfect square trinomial. So this one will be 25 over 4. So the perfect square trinomial for number 3 will be a fraction. And it's 25 over 4. And the reason why it's a fraction is because your middle term is an odd number. So in a perfect square trinomial, your, if your middle term is an odd number, you will end up having a fraction as your constant term if you want to create a perfect square trinomial. So once again, this step right here is important because you won't understand um, completing the square method if you don't know how to create a perfect square trinomial.